Hello and welcome back once again to Infinite Jeff, the project where I, Jeff, read the book Infinite Jest to you and only you. One page at a time, one day at a time, put it up on the internet for all to hear. I don't know, I'm just I'm looking at my phone, so I'm distracted. Uh, anyway, uh, Infinite Jest, page 224. Let's, uh, let's dive right in. I got like five I gotta record today. As I slacked. So I'm catching up. So, all right, page five. I'm sure there was some damn dialogue in these. I don't know. All right, 224, here we go. <clears throat> Hang things from historic icons, hang anti-ONAN flags, as if anyone not paid to remove them cares one way or the other. The encaged and suicidal have a really hard time imagining anyone caring passionately about anything. And here too are E. e. Boylston's dealers, sirened of the other, second cage, standing as always outside FAO Schwartz, young little black boys, boys so black they're blue. Yeah. Horrifically skinny and young, little more than living shadows in knit caps and knee-length sweatshirts and very white high tops, shifting and blowing into their cupped hands, alluding to the availability of a certain material, just barely alluding is all, with their postures and bored blank important gaze. Certain salesmen have only to stand there. Certain types of sales, the customer comes to you and lo. The cops at the flag across the street don't give them a look. Joelle hurries past the line of dealers. She tries to, her clogs loose and clocking, tarrying for just a moment at the end, just past the gauntlet's end, still within two extended hands' reach of the last board dealer, for here on the street outside Schwartz is, a, is placed an odd adverting display. Not a live salesman of any sort, but rather a humanoid figure of something that's better than cardboard, untouched by the vendors who don't even seem to look. A display on an angled rear mount stand, like a photo's frame stand. 2D, the figure of a man in a wheelchair, in a coat and tie, his leg lap blanketed, and no legs below. His well-fed face artistically reddened with some terrible joy. His smile's arc of the terror of the extreme curvature that exists between mirth and fury. His ecstasy terrible to see. His head hairless and plastic and cast back. His eyes on the blue harlequin patches of the post-storm sky looking straight up, or having a seizure, or a static, his arms also up and out in a gesture of submission, or triumph, or thanks, his oddly thick right hand the receptacle for the black spine of the case of some new film cartridge being advertised for distribution. The cartridge stuck like a tongue out of a slot, slot of his lineless palm. Except there is only this display, this ecstatic figure, and a cartridge no feral vendors removed, no mention of title. No blurbs or quoted references to critics' thumbs. The case's spine itself, bare, black, slightly pebbled, generic plastic, conspicuously unlabeled. Two oriental women's shopping bags catch and make her raincoat billy billow slightly as Joelle stands there briefly, feeling the line's dealers looking at her, assessing. And then, someone calls something to one of the cops halfway up the statue, using his first name, which echoes slightly and breaks the spell. The little black boys look away. None of the passers-by seems to notice the display she stands before, reflecting. It's some kind of anti-ad. To direct attention is what is not said. Lead up to an, inevitably, an inevitability you deny. Not new, but an expensive and affecting display. The film cartridge itself would be blank too, or the case empty. Worthless, because it really can be removed all the way from the slot in the figure's hand. Joelle removes it and looks at it and puts it back. She had her last fling with film cartridges. Jim had used her several times. Jim, at the end of, had filmed her at prodigious and multi... And we end on a hyphen. Page 224 <clears throat> of Infinite Jest. <sighs> it's kind of a dreary morning. Night. 